Here is today's science lesson. So we are going to look at microorganisms today. So on the next double page in your science books, on the left hand side, could you please write today's date and learning objective? Pause the video and do this now, please. Okay, so far we have looked at classifying animals and plants, but today we're going to be looking at a different type of living thing. Okay, so you might be able to guess from our learning objective, but here's some clues. So you can't usually see this type of living thing without a microscope. Bakers use this to, when creating food like breads and cheese. And you could have hundreds of thousands of this living thing on your hands right now. Hmm, what could it be? Can you think? Well done if you guessed. It is actually microorganisms. So micro meaning very, very, very tiny. And organisms meaning a living thing. Okay, so... Microorganisms are so small that we need a microscope to see them. They are used to make bread rise and cheese taste nice and they are everywhere so we pick them up on our hands quite a lot of the time. On your screen you can now see a definition of what a microorganism is. Okay, so they cannot be seen by the naked eye and hundreds of them could fit on the full stop at the end of this sentence. They are found everywhere and they are the largest group of living things on our planet. There are trillions of them on Earth. So what I would like you to do under your learning objective is copy this definition into your books. Okay, do this now for me. Pause the video. So now what I want you to think about is, are microorganisms good or bad? Hmm, have a think. Okay, so most of the time, when they're in the right place, the majority of microorganisms aren't in fact harmful to us. And they can do a lot of good, like breaking down waste and making bread. And we couldn't live without them but sometimes they can be harmful and they can make us ill. Some could get into our digestive system and make us ill. Others can give us a cold. Others can give us diseases like chicken pox or measles, okay? So it's really important to know about microorganisms. So today we are going to do a practical experiment. Now, you will have all seen mould. Okay, so we are going to do an experiment today called the mouldy bread experiment. Okay, so as a type of microorganism, what makes mould grow? Hmm, that is my question for you guys today. So the reason we want to investigate this is so that we can stop it happening and keep our food fresher for longer. Okay, so we're going to do an experiment. You are going to use two slices of bread and the two clear plastic bags I put in your folder last week. We're going to place each slice of bread in one of the plastic bags and then change some of the variables that are affecting the bread and we are going to observe them over a week. Okay. So, for example, we might decide that we are going to put one of our slices of bread in a light place and one of them in a dark place. We might decide that we are going to dampen one of the slices of bread and we're going to keep the other one really dry. We might decide that we're going to put one of the slices of bread in a very, very cold place like the freezer and the other in a very, very warm place maybe like over a radiator or next to the radiator okay so the rest of our lesson we're going to spend preparing this investigation and writing it up in our books and then over the next week you are going to do lots of observations every day to check what is happening 
and keeping in our mind we are looking for does mold grow and how does it grow so just my computer doesn't want to work let's just give it a minute to capture so when my computer decides to work in the next couple of minutes i am going to show you a waggle of this experiment that i did in my book okay and this by the end of this lesson this is hopefully what yours will also look like 